I mean, the Jewish quarter is full of Jewish people. Christian quarters are full of Christians. The Muslim quarter is full of Muslim people. And they live here in a, quite a crowded environment. And it has these very unique logistics that you'll sort of see as you walk through of how you get around. I mean, these are the streets. This isn't a museum exhibit. I mean, people yeah. get to their home and to the shop coming down the street. All my life, I've longed to visit Israel. I could only imagine what a fantastic experience that would be to actually walk where Jesus walked. And now, for the first time, I'm about to set off on that trip. And I want to take you with me. We'll fly from here in the US to Tel Aviv, Israel's main port city. We'll drive to Tiberias by the Sea of Galilee, to Magdala, to the Mount of Beatitudes, and of course, to Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives. I'm gonna meet some new friends who'll take me to places I'd never find on my own and unpack the depth of stories I've known since I was a child growing up in Scotland. I'm so excited. Well, there's no better place to start than in Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel. Today, I'm gonna to be joined by Mati Shoshani, who's gonna take me through the ancient gates and into the old city of Jerusalem. Let's walk where Jesus walked. I'm finally here in Jerusalem. I am so excited. A little jet lagged and totally wearing the wrong shoes. And if you ever come to Israel, wear flat shoes. Behind me, can you see this? I love Jerusalem. I have to get a photo of that. But I'm waiting for a friend who's going to come meet me. Uh, his name is Mati. And actually, here he is. Hey, hey Sheila. Oh, thank you for meeting me here. Good this, to see you. This is amazing. Hey, it? welcome to Jerusalem. All my life, I've wanted to come, and this is the first time that my feet have been on this soil. Well, listen, this is the place to start. Yeah. We're right in the heart of Jerusalem. The old city is behind us. We're about to walk down through Jaffa Gate and see what this city has to offer. Before we go into the old city, is there any way you take a picture of me in Definitely. front of the sign? Let's do it. Let me just figure this out. Ta -da! Three, two. Perfect. Let's do this. Let's go. I'm taking you your arm when we Let's go down do here. Because you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking if there's any markets in here, that maybe I should change my shoes. I think that's a good idea. I'll say this for the, the benefit of people visiting this country. The people who chose these stones for the city didn't really think it through. Well, they're beautiful. But they're not very practical. No, not if you're yeah. wearing ridiculous footwear like mine. So we're in what we call the Christian Quarter. Yeah. There are four quarters to the old city of Jerusalem the Christian Quarter, the Armenian Quarter, who's also, who are also Christian, the Muslim Quarter, and the Jewish Quarter. And the Christian Quarter has the majority, but not all, of the churches in the Old City, and there are a lot of them. There's a church for every denomination, and a church for every type of Christianity under the sun. Wow. And many of them share even the same uh, space. Like the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I believe, has eight denominations at least represented there. And do people live in this part? Yeah. So it's not just a place where they come. People definitely live here. I mean, the Jewish quarter is full of Jewish people. Christian quarters are full of Christians. The Muslim quarter is full of Muslim people. And they live here in a, quite a crowded environment. And it has these very unique logistics that you'll sort of see as you walk through of how you get around. I mean, these are the streets. This Amazing. isn't a museum exhibit. I mean, people yeah. get to their home and to the shop coming down the street. 
Do the four quarters live together quite peaceably? For the most part. <laughs> you know, we, we are in the Middle East, after all. Yeah. And religion is a really good topic to pick a fight over. <laughs> sure. So yeah. It's becoming that way in America, too. Historically speaking, it's full of people from all kinds of, you know, all places of, of, of life, all religions that live together, for the most part, in a very peaceful way. Fascinating place to live. Sheila, I think the number one order of business, yeah. aside from more content, yeah. is getting you a better pair of shoes for the city. Absolutely. And there's right the place for oh, you over here. Perfect. Hey, stupid person needs better shoes. No, no, not stupid. <laughs> you, you're prepared for the streets of, of West Jerusalem, not this side of the city. Awesome. Is this kind? Yeah. And there's something more close. Yeah, I, I might go with, with these. <laughs> For yourself? Yeah. You can try them. Thank you. Well, I can get you a chair. Yeah, I'll, I'll get this, okay. Here. Oh, I love that. Thank you. That color fits perfectly with your outfit. <laughs> I think that's perfect. You wear them now. I would love to wear them now. We'll take a bag for the other shoes. <sighs> okay, I'm about five inches shorter, but way more comfortable. Okay. These are great. But a whole lot safer. A whole lot safer. So what do we owe you? A hundred chickens, fine, all right. I got it. Yeah. Oh, right. what a gentleman. I'll bill you later, it's okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much. You probably saved my life. Ah, this should be a smoother I sailing skip. from now on. I could dance. Oh, what a difference. Hello, Mr. Zach. Hi. This is my friend Sheila. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet good you. To I see love you. your store. Very good. Thanks. Very good. This is beautiful. Sheila, this is not for tourists. This is the real deal. Wow. These are not toys. These are the real items, you know, yeah. used in Jerusalem through the time of the Second Temple and Jesus time. Yeah. Is there anything you could show me? Actually, I just got this to do already. Oh, this is a wow. century Herodian type pottery anointment. So the lady that broke the anointment on, uh, on Jesus. Jesus' feet? Use feet. something like this. Use something similar to this. This is priceless. Yes. No, it actually has a price, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> but it has a narrow neck, easy to break. Oh, wow. Feel it. It's very fragile. I love these kind of things. Oh my God. It's, 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 it's been buried in the ground for millennia, and we're connecting right now to something that someone at the time of Christ, several thousand years ago, was using on a daily basis. Yes. I love that connection. And Israel allow yet to work with antiquities, yeah. you know, and to you know get something from the time of Christ. You must be a very respected man in this area. God is good to me. Mm -hmm. God is good to me. Yes. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to have you. Good uh, to see thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of Jerusalem. Yeah, exactly. I'm loving this old city. See you. Thank you. Many people have this concept that Christianity sort of started in Israel and yeah. left. Yeah. But it never really left. You know, let's say if you're thinking about the, the first century, all the disciples of Christ, they remain, or the majority of them, remain in the land and they built a community here. And for centuries, those people remained in the land. Wow. Uh, and they sort of evolved to what the sun has. And, and some of these early churches reflect that. Uh, these early churches were built based on the stories that the locals were telling about. This is the place. I heard it from my oh, father, wow. I heard it from his father, and we've been here ever since. What is that? So this is falafel. It's made out of uh, chickpeas and a bunch of other spices. Yeah. Herbs, really good. Yeah. Fried. I would love to try it. It's for people who uh, work a hard physical uh, labor day. Oh, so not for me so then. So for me and you, maybe a couple bites. <laughs> Your falafel? Yes, We'd please. We'd love some, thank you. Okay, sure. This thing, in one, one shape or another, you can find it all over the Middle East. Wow. Falafel for the first time. 
Wow. Hey. What do you think? I love it. It's pretty good. That's good. Shukran, thank you. Let's go, Sheila. It was really good. It was quite good. But I don't think I could eat the whole thing. I mean, that's quite filling. So Sheila, let's head out from the Christian quarter, down into the Jewish quarter, all the way to the Western Wall. Oh, I'd love to. So we're going this way. I'd love to do that. Sheila, this is the Western Wall, the most holy place to the Jewish people. And right above it, one of the holiest places to the Muslim people. I mean, this, for, for us, people of faith, people of the Bible in this land, this is a cl as close as it gets to the beginning of the story. Explain why. So right behind us is what is the supporting wall of Herod's temple. And right above it would have been the Holy of Holies. Uh, Solomon's temple, atop which was built Herod's temple. Uh, you know, the, the next temple, the temple of those who came back to the land. So going way back, you're talking the Ark of the Covenant. You're talking the presence of God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after, after all the traveling throughout the region, it all lands here on this hilltop right behind us. And David's city, Solomon's city, Jerusalem throughout the centuries, this is the heart of it all. And it remains that way. Uh, and there, there's a reason that people have fought and thought and prayed and cried over this place. It's because of the significance of that, because this place, you know, God, God's story culminates in a physical place and action and people. And that place, those actions, those stories start and end where we're standing. I love this. So we're singing, we want Mashiach now, we want Messiah now because of the core of that gives me chills the core of the jewish belief always i mean always every single moment in history there's a belief of the messiah coming it's not whether there you know the messiah is, is yeshua jesus it's whether there it's that's it's just the question of the identity of the messiah right. there's no question that there needs to be a messiah mm -hmm. and there's still that longing that yearning mm -hmm. uh, definitely with orthodox uh, judaism today Okay, that was fascinating. Um, it was lively. It was lively. I want to ask you about, when I think of, I'm part of the church in America, but this is seen in other countries too. And I think sometimes there can be a mentality of just come Jesus and just get us out of here, as opposed to understanding that often it is through suffering and hardship that we experience the life of Christ. I often say that Christ could have risen without the scars of crucifixion. But I think scars are proof that God heals. And I know that in my own life. Yeah, I, I would 100% agree. And I, I would say that, that Israel and like, let's call it the Jerusalem experience is where it all comes together. Why do you think that there's so many encouragements in scripture, not just encouragement, commands to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for Israel? Well, one, because Jerusalem needs peace. Yeah. Uh, the city e exemplifies this, this uh, point of tension and contention and, and friction that is, is so, there, there are so many layers to it, the political and the ethnic and the religious, and it all, the biblical narrative, it all comes together in this one place. People look at it, they look at what's happening in this land, and because they care about it both on the, just the human level, but also on the fact that what happens here is proof of God's plan. And this land exemplifies it, and people that come through this land get to experience that. They get to see that, again, it's a real country, it's, it's a real country with real problems, real people. You know, the streets smell just like anywhere else. But this is where God promises that things will happen. And yeah. when they do, there's an, a unique significance that doesn't exist elsewhere. Monty, thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy busy life and your family to be with us and sharing so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you for listening to me rant on. Oh, I, I could it. do it all day, but now I think I'm gonna go and see if I can go to the women's side um, and maybe say a prayer there. It's a must. This is Jerusalem's holiest site. It's the only remains of the retaining wall surrounding the Temple Mount, the site of the first and second temples. The first was destroyed by Babylonians over 500 years before the birth of Christ, and the second was destroyed in AD 70 by Romans. 
Men and women pray in separate areas. The women's area is smaller. In fact, in 2016, the Israeli government planned a space where men and women could pray together. But one year later, that was voted down. Gosh, I have to tell you, for my first day in Israel, this has been amazing. And to be here in Jerusalem, I wanted to share with you a little of the reason behind this trip and why it was so important to me. This is not, for me, a sightseeing trip. It's a sign-seeing trip. Do you know that there's, well, theologians disagree, but anywhere between 300 and over 400 prophecies in the Old Testament pertaining to the coming Messiah. But the tragedy is, when Jesus was born here, His own people didn't recognize Him. And having Jerusalem in the background, I was studying this before we even started out for the day, but this is what it says in Matthew 23, verse 37. It says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often have I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks. And now look, your house wouldn't let me. You know, it reminded me of a story my mom told me. I was born in a small town on the west coast of Scotland, and my mom was a farm accountant. She would do the accounts for the farmers and for the shepherds. And one night on one of the farms, there was a terrible fire and all the buildings that the animals were housed in were burned to the ground. And so it's the following morning and they're walking through the farmyard, looking at all the devastation, trying to make an assessment of the next step. And there lying on the path in front of them was a mother hen, badly, badly charred. And the farmer knew that the hen had passed, and so he just very gently, with his foot, just kicked out the way. And underneath were six live chicks. This mother had literally spread her wings over her little ones and given her life so that they could be saved. And do you know that that is what Jesus did? There's such a gap between the holiness of God and the sinfulness of you and me. And that's why Jesus came. One of the fun things that I got to do today, walking through the old city of Jerusalem was, Matty took me to a place where he introduced me to a friend of his. And it reminded me of, of a story, but it gave it so much fresh meaning. You'll probably remember seeing it was just a little jar that was from the time of Christ, really priceless. But it reminds me of this story that we find in John's Gospel. And it's to do with a family of some of Jesus' closest friends, Lazarus and Mary and Martha. This is John chapter 12. It says, six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he'd raised from the dead, a dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. And that's one of the things I've come to understand, even in my first day walking in the footsteps of Jesus. That's how they share fellowship here together over a meal. They sit together and share fellowship and talk. Well, Martha served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance. Some of my favorite theologians say that it was very probable that Mary and Martha were not married or had lost their husbands because they were living with their brother Lazarus. And so for Mary, this jar filled with this priceless nard, this perfume, really in some ways was her future. It's like you and I might put savings in the bank, like kind of like a retirement. This was Mary's retirement. Until she met Jesus, 
and he became her future. Even at the beginning of this, I don't know if you have a personal relationship with Jesus. And honestly, none of this for me is about religion. Religion has brought so much damage to this world. This is all about relationship with Jesus. And what scripture very clearly says in the book of Romans, it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not might be, not naming certain kinds of people. It doesn't matter if you come from a palace or you live rough on the streets. When you recognize that Jesus came as the Son of God to bridge the gap between us and our Holy Father, and you call on His name, then your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But let me just say this one thing. Sometimes I think within our culture, we think, well, I, I'll make a decision, you know, I'll go forward, I'll ask Jesus into my heart. And then you think, well, all I have to do after that is I'll show up for church as often as I can and I'll make sure I have a Bible. No, that's not what Jesus looks for. He wants you and me to be all in. Jesus came to make disciples, not just people who signed a form and said yes. He wants you and I to be all in 24 seven serving Jesus. I can't wait to show you some of the other places we're gonna have an opportunity to go this week. But in case, case there's just even one of you and you don't know this Jesus, could I pray a simple prayer with you? And you, wherever you are, you could just pray it line by line with me. If you've decided that you want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ and live the rest of your life for Him. Pray, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you came, that you died on the cross and you rose again from the dead. I know I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me for my sin. I want to follow you for the rest of my life, all in 24 seven. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making me your child. In Jesus name, I pray, amen. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below and invite your friends to join the conversation.